Hi sisters, James Charles here and welcome back to my channel. We're obviously not in the normal makeup studio. I'm currently on a ski trip with some friends and family. Don't worry, okay, today's video is still a full face of viral products versus their elf dupes. But really quickly before we get into that, I just wanted to take a quick minute and say thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart for all the love on Call Me Back. If you guys don't know, my first ever single dropped last week called Call Me Back. It's here on my YouTube channel as a lyric video and also available for streaming on all music platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube Music, Amazon, Tidal, Deezer, everywhere you could possibly look. And the outpouring of love in the comments, in my DMs, seeing responses and covers on TikTok has honestly blown my mind. This project means so much to me. I wrote and recorded this for more than a year as a form of therapy for myself. I really didn't know if I was ever going to put it out. It's no secret that I love doing music, but after getting made fun of so much for my voice and having all the different memes go viral, I just didn't know if there was really space for me in this industry. But after hearing how many people were able to relate to the song and it helped them through a hard time, I know that this is what I meant to be doing. And I cannot thank you guys enough for streaming, for reacting, for sharing with your friends, for playlisting, for making videos, for dancing, for doing your covers. Keep it up. It means so, so much to me. I love you guys so, so much. There's more to come, but for right now, stream, call me back. Let's get into today's video. I love you. Mwah. Hello you guys, James Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If my voice sounds even more annoying than it usually is, I am currently sick. I don't know what is going on. I woke up yesterday with a sore throat, could barely breathe. It's not gorgeous over here, but I love you guys so much. I love filming for you. So we're going to get through this together, okay? One like on the video equals one prayer. For today's video, I am actually really excited. As you guys know, 2024 just got started, and this might be a little bit of an early claim to make, but I really feel like this is Elf's year. We all know Elf, the makeup brand. They are a drugstore cult classic favorite. Elf has been a big brand for a very long time now, but I feel like over the past a couple of months or year, they have been getting more and more and more popular because so many products have been going viral, and people have started to kind of figure out a lot of these products that Elf is releasing happen to be dupes of really popular, more expensive designer makeup products. And even though I buy and try quite a lot of elf products i will admit even i didn't really catch on to this whole like duping shenanigan business that's been going on here until i saw this video from ali j that blew up on tiktok where she did a half face of viral products and the other half using their elf dupe counterparts and oh my god i cannot believe how many dupes elf is actually making my mind was blown so i decided to do my research and in today's video just like ali j we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison a little beauty battle if you will of viral products versus their elf dupes If you guys are excited for this beauty battle today, and if you love Elf, please go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up down below. Your love and support really helps out the channel quite a lot. And like I said, okay, I'm sick, I'm dying. I could be in the hospital right now, but I'm filming for you guys. <laughs> Ew, honestly, you should thumbs down for that. <laughs> Let's get into this makeup routine. For primer today, we're gonna start off with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. Now, this has actually been in my collection for a very long time. I love this primer. It's very nice. It has this green color, as you guys can see, and it is called Hydro Grip. So the reason why people really love this, myself included, is because it makes your face nice and sticky for the makeup to lay on top of. Now, the price tag of this Power Grip Primer is $38. Now, Milk is obviously not a drugstore brand, so a $38 primer does make sense. It's actually on the higher end of a lot of like the Sephora Ulta primers, but I I really like this one. It does work really, really great. Now on the other side, we are going to use the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. Now I've had this in my collection for quite a long time as well. I also really like this. The thought of these being dupes never even occurred to me. We have Hydro Grip, Power Grip Primer. They're both like a greeny blue color. Hello! Now this primer retails for $10, so a whole $28 less than the milk version. And this supposedly does the same exact thing. Makes your face nice and sticky for the makeup to lay on top of. I will say I've tried this primer before. It does do a nice job, but it's not my favorite from e.l.f. They do have the Jelly Pop primer, which is like a very similar thing, but it's red instead and a bit more sticky. I did want to use that one because formula-wise, they are pretty similar. But I mean, Power Grip, Hydro Grip, these are the obvious dupes. <gasps> oh my god. Honestly, the elf one is stickier. The elf one is way, way stickier. Look at this. Okay, look, look. All right. Oh my God. Okay. I mean, between the two of these, they do a really similar thing. And in my personal opinion, primer is not the most important step of your makeup routine. So I'm definitely gonna have to give this victory right away to Miss Elf. $28 cheaper and a little bit stickier. She really said power grip. 
She got that gorilla, <laughs> that, that gorilla grip. Now I'm gonna preface this next one by saying regardless of the brand, I think this actual step is stupid. I would never normally do this. I'm only including these because both of these products went viral and that is the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter and the e.l.f. Halo Glow. Now, the reason why so many bitches love these, okay, are the girlies with the perfect flawless skin that think that they are too good for foundation. And if that is you, I shouldn't even say that in a hating way because I wish that I was so pretty and so perfect and so flawless that I needed something like this that has literally zero coverage to it as my entire base routine. Unfortunately, I am not that girly. You're still not that girl. This is the Charlotte Tilbury one. It is $49, $49, which is just fucking berserk in my opinion. I love a lot of Charlotte Tilbury things. This is not one of them. We're just gonna put this right on as a nice layer underneath, underneath the full coverage foundation that we're gonna do in the next step. That's what always really gets me with this too. There's no point. If you're gonna go in with a full coverage foundation, what the fuck is this glowing liquid gonna do underneath? Nothing. Now this side is the e.l.f. Halo Glow and in comparison, $49, this one is 14. So once again, quite a vast price difference here. I'm gonna blend this in using, I guess my painted sponge and it's literally blending away. Okay, it's barely there. Charlotte Tilbury, flawless filter on this side. Okay, now we'll do e.l.f. on this side. I do, I think that this, okay. You know what, I'm gonna be honest. I think the Charlotte side looks better. Whereas this side just looks like a- Is it worth triple the amount of money? Well, I wouldn't buy either one of these products. So like, despite the price, I would choose the Charlotte Tilbury over the e.l.f. because I actually think the formula of this is far superior. This is just not doing a whole lot. It literally just looks like a, a, like a BB cream. Whereas this really does give that like super glowy filtered Look, I mean, look at that. My skin literally looks like the fucking Tin Man, which is what it's supposed to do. I will give this one to Charlotte, but honestly, no one's really a winner in this category. Now for foundation today, I'm pretty excited because I have actually not tried either one of these products. Now, when I saw the people online were saying that these were dupes of each other, I was actually really, really surprised. Apparently the NARS Soft Matte Foundation and the ELF Flawless Satin Foundation are dupes of each other. First of all, right away in the names, okay, we have Soft Matte and we have Satin, not the same thing. So I don't know how those are gonna be dupes of each other. The packaging, looks nothing alike either. So I feel like maybe right off the bat, this might not be a fair comparison, but according to TikTok, we're gonna try this out. Now I love a lot of NARS products and I know a lot of people are heavy stands. I'm not the biggest fan of their complexion products because they always run really yellow. Now this foundation costs $42, which in comparison to others at Sephora or Ulta is on the slight higher end, but definitely doesn't trickle into like luxury territory by any means. All right, that is the NARS all applied. Now we're gonna apply the ELF. Now my team just told me off camera that this is actually the biggest price difference of the entire video. As I said, I've never tried this before, so I don't know how much this costs. If this is 42, I'm gonna guess this is $16? Six. Six dollars. Are you serious? Six, oh my God, a six dollar foundation? What, oh my God, no way. Ooh, thickums. Okay, <laughs> now out of the two colors already off the bat, this one is better. This actually has a more neutral undertone, whereas the other one was just plain old yellow. This color's better for me, but I certainly would not say it's a bad foundation by any means, it's actually going on really nicely. But one thing about foundation is that even though they look good in the beginning, it does not mean that they will look good hours from now. So my current verdict is that this is the winner, but I will give you guys a final result by the end of the video because it could change. Now with concealer, I think we all know what's coming. Okay, we have Tarte Shape Tape versus ELF Camo Concealer. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of the channel, you would know that I tried the ELF regular camo concealer quite a while ago because everyone's talking about it being a shape tape dupe. And I said, no, it's not. Nope, 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 nope. No, it's not you lying little bitches but it did look really beautiful until I noticed that it was creasing really, really badly on me. So now that the new hydrating version has come out and everyone's saying this is a lot better, we're going to try this again because apparently this is actually a do. Let's start off with Shape Tape. Now the price tag of the Shape Tape concealer is $32 and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, okay, it's gonna be hard to beat this. Call me old fashioned all you want, but this concealer just does it for me. It is never let me down. It is really good. The coverage is beautiful. It blends out so nicely. It doesn't crease. Like she just really is that girl. But I'm open to seeing if the seven dollar elf hydrating camel concealer is any comparison Ooh, right off the bat this feels much better than the old version now unlike our last product the elf version actually has a little bit more of a yellow undertone than i would normally like so that's kind of annoying but both formulas do feel pretty similar they're both very buttery and creamy and they look full coverage as well so let's start off by blending out our shape tape not surprisingly Shape Tape blends it out flawlessly. Let's move on to the e.l.f. side, which is also blending out just as nice. And looking up close, 
I mean, I'm gonna be real, you guys, they look almost exactly the same. Like they are super, super similar. Looking in the mirror, I do have one side that I think looks a little bit better, but just like the foundation, I'm gonna save that to the end of the video to give you guys my final verdict and thoughts. So make sure you stay tuned. Now we're gonna go in and add some contour to the skin. Now, I will preface this step as well by saying this is not my favorite thing. I do love a cream contour, but I love a like pressed contour formula like the Patrick Ta, for example, where it's just like a flat little cream, okay? On this side, we're gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wands, and on this side, we're going to use the e.l.f. Dupe, Dupe, which is the Halo Glow Beauty Wand Contour Shade. I have tried the Charlotte one, I have not tried the e.l.f. one before, so I am going into this with an open mind, but I am not really the biggest fan of these like beauty wands in general, but let's see which side we like better. I'm just gonna apply some, and then we're gonna blend it out with a brush, and this contour one, by the way, costs $42, which I think is a lot of money to be spending on a contour. I will give credit though, just like all Charlotte Tilbury's products, this does blend out very, very beautifully. It goes on obviously really dark, but it shears out and does create a nice natural looking contour for the skin, so it is good. It's a great product. A lot of people obviously love this. I just personally prefer a solidified cream, but to each their own, everybody has different preferences with their makeup routine. And this is gonna look nice in the end, which is really all that matters. On the other side, we have our e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Contour Wand. I don't know why this is called Halo Glow because I think and I'm hoping that this is a matte formula. It is. Why? Oh my God. This is the same thing that Tarte did when they had one product do well for shape tape. They started calling everything shape tape. No, 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 no. You do not need to do that. So I feel like e.l.f. had a hit with Halo Glow. This is one of their first dupes, I feel like, that really started taking off that has now like started this new e.l.f. craze. There's nothing glowing about this matte contour product, so don't call it Halo Glow. Anyway. Very similar component. The sponge on top is a little bit smaller. It's actually very small, which I feel like is kind of weird to be contouring with. Anyway, nitpicking. Let's go ahead and apply this. This costs, by the way, $42 versus nine. Jesus, okay, quite a large price difference there. Okay, the small applicator doesn't really bother me as much as I thought it was going to, but it's just like weird. Blending this out, it is blending out really nicely, actually. Oh my God. Okay, I will say in terms of the color, this is a little bit of a warmer tone. The Charlotte Tilbury side was definitely a like true contour color. It's a very like neutral, cool brown. Whereas this elf side is honestly giving me more of a like bronzery type of color, but I, that's not really a bad thing. It's just more of something that you guys can take note of if you're deciding which one you wanna buy. I will say this one is actually like more coverage too. The Charlotte one goes on really dark, but shears out really, really quickly. Whereas this one goes on more true to color and does blend out really nicely, but you still get that pigment. Whereas it's kind of lost on the Charlotte side. Okay, you know what? I already have my winner, but let me blend in this nose contour. My winner between these two, Charlotte Tilbury versus e.l.f. Halo Glow. Charlotte took the first round, but Miss e.l.f. is taking this round. This contour is way better, in my opinion. $9 versus $42, great, great price difference, but I prefer the color of this, I prefer the finish of this, and I also prefer the pigmentation. This is really nice, and I understand that it's for like the natural girlies who want like that super simple, no makeup contoured skin. That's just simply not me. e.l.f. is the victor. This is a pretty good product. We're gonna take a little bit of a brief intermission from this fight today. Okay, you can go up to the stands and get some popcorn, get some snacks, because for translucent setting powder, there was not a dupe. So I'm just gonna use my Huda Beauty setting powder over top of the entire face, and I'll be right back with some brightening powder. Now we're set in place and fully mattified, and this next dupe, I was actually so excited to hear about because we're gonna be using one of my favorite products ever in my makeup routine, the MAC Studio Fix Foundation Powder. I love, love, love this. For under eye brightening, I use this every single time I get ready. Ready. and apparently the e.l.f. Camo Foundation Powder is a dupe of this. I have heard of this before, but I've never actually tried it, so I'm very excited to see if these actually are a comparison. I'm gonna be upfront about my bias. I love this, so it's gonna be really hard for Selene to beat this, but I am more than open to trying new things, so let's go ahead and see. So we have the MAC powder that is apparently $42 far more expensive than I would have honestly guessed. And I loved using this just right in the high points of my face to brighten up and amp up my concealer. Yeah, just so beautiful. Okay, now I got the shade 125C. And this one is $11 in comparison. So let's see if they actually compare in terms of formula. Whoa. Okay, so wow, this definitely does have pigment to it, but Oh, see, it's one of those times too. It looks fine on camera, but in real life, it does not look great. It's a fully matte powder, but it's adding a slight level of like sheen and reflectiveness to the skin, which is not my favorite. And it's not applying it very um, evenly as well. It's a bit patchy. This also has a ton of fallout as well. 
Yeah, no questions asked. Between the MAC Studio Fix and the e.l.f. Camo Foundation, I am definitely gonna give this to MAC. The price is way, way, way higher. I honestly had no idea this was $42. That's kind of shocking to me. I'm definitely a believer in the fact that some steps are your routine. You can save money by getting the cheaper option, but some steps, specifically complexion, you need to invest in the better quality products because you want your skin to look beautiful and flawless. And unfortunately, this is not the product to do it with. Let's move on to the next. I fucked up. I fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot, arguably, the most important step of this routine that sparked this whole debate in the first place, okay? We have the Rare Beauty Blushes versus the e.l.f. New, once again, Camo Liquid Blush. Why? They're not the same products. They're not the same products. But I've obviously already fully powdered my face, which is not gorgeous and not ideal. These are liquid blushes, so these should have been done over my wet foundation, and unfortunately, I forgot. So what we're going to do is we're going to give my face a nice spritz of some setting spray to bring some hydration and water. Little water. Some... Shut up. So the face is wet now, okay? And instead of going in on the skin and doing the little dots and blending that out because that's going to cause a problem, I'm going to put a little bit of this onto the back of my hand, just like this, starting off with Rare. And I'm going to grab a cream blush brush and I'm going to pat this over top of the foundation. Now, obviously this might not yield the best result in terms of a blush application. However, both sides are set. So both sides will look equally as potentially bad. It's still gonna be a fair review. It just might not look good on either side. Okay, we have Rare on the side. Honestly, it looks fine. Then I'll use my sponge over top of it just to make sure it's nice and blended in. Okay, gorgeous. Okay, now on this side, we're gonna do the e.l.f. Camo Blush. Okay, this is in the shade Pinky... Pinky Promise. Oh. <laughs> you were serious, it actually is. Which is the dupe of Happy, which I am not, from finding out that they're stealing my shit too. Oh my God, this does not look very good. Jesus. So in this comparison, the Rare Beauty one costs $23, which is the first like affordable product on this side of the face. And the e.l.f. Camel blushes are $7. So definitely the smallest price jump between the two products that we've seen so far. I will say from applying them like this, which once again, okay, just to, before anybody starts attacking me, we know that this is not the way that it was supposed to be done, okay? But this side did blend out really beautifully and nicely over top of the foundation, whereas this side looks a little crazy. Out of the two of these, I'm gonna be honest, I think that the Rare side does look a lot better. It laid on nicer, it looks prettier, it blends it out better, the radiance is still there. But when I did the actual comparison of these, how they were supposed to be used, I did give the victory to e.l.f. because I thought that the price point was better and it blended out nicer and has more pigmentation. So, is this a draw? Take a bite. You stupid bitch. Okay, so we have $23 versus seven. I mean, obviously $16 more expensive, but I don't think that that $16 is gonna break the bank. I think that if you're a fan of Rare and Selena, you're gonna get this one. I think if you want the cheaper alternative, the e.l.f. one is just as good. You can make your final selection between these two. Next. The base is all done. The skin is looking okay on both sides. Let's go ahead and do the eyebrows. Now, for the brows today, I also just realized that I may have fucked up again because we're gonna be using the Anastasia Brow Freeze on one side. Great brow gel that always works best before makeup. <laughs> and the dupe for that on the other side is the e.l.f. Brow Lift. Now, I never tried this before. I'm assuming that they're probably gonna be very comparable. Let's go into the Anastasia first. And similar to the blush, that's gonna be another situation where if it doesn't look the best, it's gonna not look the best equally on both sides because I fucked up. Now, I really like the Anastasia Brow Freeze. It is $26. I just find that whenever you use any of these like brow wax type of products over top of foundation, it just like, it combines the foundation into the wax. Like you guys can even already see, like see how that's turning like a weird like, tan color is because it's picking up the foundation from my skin and mixing it in to the brow hairs. Honestly, brow freeze on one side. Let's try the elf on the other. Oh, this is much, uh, oh God. This is much, um, it's more malleable. Shut up, James. Okay, so this is $20 less. I don't think either one of these look really great, but I do think out of the two of them that the Anastasia side does look definitely better. It is not as crusty. It dried down nicely. It's staying in place. Whereas this just looks, no, yeah, no, not great. I'm gonna try to fill in and fix these brows a little bit before we move on to the next step because this is, this is pretty bad. <laughs> so I'll be right with that. All right, we're back. I fixed the brows. Honestly, I hate how both of them look to be completely honest. So I don't even, I have zero verdict for that. Now for the eyes, I put some bronzer in the crease. Don't worry, we're gonna add something else in a quick little second. I also applied a wing liner, which I'm aware looks like shit, okay? I coughed 
in the middle of one of my wings and it got a little thicker than I wanted it to be. I'm sorry if this is not the best makeup you've ever seen. Okay, I'm gonna take this off, drink some soup, some chicken noodle, and then go to bed. Just bear with me here. We're gonna add some glitter to the lid. On this head, we're gonna use the Stila Liquid Metals. Who remembers these? It's been a hundred years since I feel like anybody has picked up a Stila Liquid Metals product. These were that girl back in the time. $25, these are pretty crazy. They are like a liquid glitter that you just brush onto your eyelid and these were revolutionary at the time because nobody had this. And now they have been duped by several, several brands. Now, my Stila was Kit and Karma. This is called Flirty Birdie. As you can see, this one is quite a lot smaller, okay, in terms of the component, how much product you get inside of there. But this costs 25 and this costs $6. Quite a steal. Let's see if the formula is actually any comparison because even though people haven't really been talking about Stila much recently, it is good. Well, this is really wet. So now that my creases are both cut with these shadows, I do have my thoughts on this. At first, I was going to give ELF the benefit of the doubt because this is clearly labeled as a metallic liquid shadow, whereas this is labeled as a glitter liquid shadow. So I was thinking metallic and glitter are not the same thing, therefore they're not a dupe, and both products are doing what they're advertising that they will do. However, now that my ELF side has dried down, this is glitter. There is definitely some glitter sparkles on my lid, but they look like shit, okay? They, they do not look good. This is not a good product. It is just not. Even if this was intended to be metallic, there's glitter flex, it's creasing, it has literally no pigment to it. This is not great. ELF makes a lot of really good products. This is not one of them. If you're looking for whether it's a glitter or metallic liquid shadow for your lid, I would definitely recommend the Stila over this one because I just, I cannot recommend you guys buy this. Even if it is only $6, you'd be much better off splurging for a better product like this or or just get an eyeshadow palette that has some great glitters in it. For example, the Basic Canvas palette available now on Painted Dog. Let's give these lashes a nice little curl. Now for mascara today, we have another viral dupe. Now, I'm gonna use the Benefit Roller Lash first and foremost on this side. And honestly, I am so excited to pick this back up today because this used to be one of my ride or die favorite mascaras. I love this shit. The formula is so good. The brush is nice and tiny for good little detail work. I honestly don't know why I stopped using this. This one is really, really great. And this retails for $29, which I feel like is not bad for a prestige brand mascara. I honestly remember this mascara being a lot better than it is. <laughs> it does not look very good on my lashes right now, but I don't know what is going on. On the other side, we're gonna use the elf lap. Are you kidding me with this? Lash and roll. That's crazy. Come on. Roller lash, lash and roll. Elf, come on, you guys. I've always said that I'm kind of in two minds about dupes. They're always gonna happen, so I don't think that there's any use in getting super upset over them unless a brand creates like a direct copy, which this clearly is. Look at the packaging. Both black tubes, pink caps, roller lash, lash and roll, come on. I think that if you're going to dupe another brand's product, change it up a little bit. Figure out how to make it work for your brand and your brand's aesthetic and your brand's story. Don't make it a fucking direct copy. Like that's so lame, that's so stupid. There are brands on the market that literally just do dupes. Like Makeup Revolution is a great example. Every single product in their brand is dupes. While a lot of people buy those products, nobody looks at Makeup Revolution as a revolutionary brand. Whereas ELF, I actually do think, has a lot of integrity and has some really, really great products that are on the market. So I don't love that they do things like this, which are so fucking lame, when they're just as capable at releasing a really, really great quality product, but just like switch it up a little bit. I'm here for a dupe. I love a dupe. In fact, the winner of this challenge, okay, is the fucking lash and roll. I think this looks far better than the Benefit Roller Lash. So that's fine. But like change the fucking name, change the packaging and just make a great mascara. You're making a statement. No, oh. it's just lame. It's here. lame. Oh, the shut revolution up. revolution is here. Lips are lined. And now we're going to add on top a nice lip oil. These are the hottest dupe of the time right now. Going on for the conversation we just had, we have the Dior Lip Oil for $40, and we have the e.l.f. Glow Reviver Lip Oil. I'm gonna let you know ahead of time, okay? This shit sucks. I'm not a fan. I bought this a long time ago to try it out. $40 for a lip oil is fucking ridiculous. I'm so sorry. It's fine. It's pretty. It does what it's supposed to do, but I have better lip oils that I already prefer. Probably gonna choose e.l.f. for this. Okay, this is the shade Pink Quartz, which is supposedly the direct knockoff. Out of the two of those, Ew, the e.l.f. one just feels better on my lips too. e.l.f., definitely winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. $8 compared to 40, literally five times the price. Five! Five times the fucking price is crazy. I would love to try some more of these flavors. We're done. Let's set this shit in place. So that is a half face of viral products compared to their e.l.f. dupes. Now, this has been quite the beauty battle for today. So let's take a look at the scorecard from the judges. So here's the tea, we'll go through really quickly. Primer was Elf. The little pre-foundation st stupid glow shit was Charlotte Tilbury. The actual foundation, 
Okay, I have to be real with you guys. I did give it to Elf in the beginning, but I will say by the end of this video, I do think the NARS actually looks a lot better. The Elf, I've had to powder multiple times throughout today's routine because it has started to get a little bit oily. My texture is looking not the most gorgeous. I don't love this, to be clear. I think the color is not that great and I have foundations that wear better throughout the day, but I do think this side of the skin looks far, far, far better than this side on camera and in person. For concealer, I will give credit where credit is due. The hydrating camel concealer is way better than the old version. Way, way, way better. This looks very beautiful on the skin, but in comparison to the two of them, my Shape Tape does look better. It's much smoother and is not creasing as much. The setting powder was pretty bad. MAC was the definite winner there. For contour, the e.l.f. was a better color and better formula, so e.l.f. was the winner. For the blush, I'm still really not sure. In my YouTube short, when I did a dedicated review, I did like the e.l.f. better, but in today's situation where I accidentally waited too long to apply these, I do think the Rare Beauty looks much more beautiful on the skin, whereas this side, well, you know what, honestly, no. This looks crazy at first, but as I've gone through the routine, this looks fine now. Elf is still the winner. Elf is still the winner. I'm giving it to Elf. Sorry, Selena. Both brows do not look great. This is one of the worst brow days I've had in a very long time. To be clear, okay, you're supposed to apply this at the very beginning of your routine. I did not do that, so that is on me once again. I'm flopping the review. I'm sorry. I'm sick. I like the Anastasia formula a lot better, but I do think the Elf brow happened to look better in the end. I don't know. You guys can make a decision on that one. No, you have to. Score card. They both look like shit. They're both bad. This looks better right now. Elf brow looks better. Yes, Elf. Mascara, roller lash versus lash and roll. We're giving it to Elf. Lash and roll was the better result. Final score, Elf six, bottle products five. <gasps> oh. Price difference. Oh, this I want to know. Price difference, $388 for the originals and $90 for Elf. So almost four and a half times more for the brand names. Whoa. That's crazy, 4X the price. I mean, say what you want about e.l.f. and their duping process, clearly it's working. I stand behind what I said, I love e.l.f., I love their pricing, I am so happy for the brand that they are having a really it girl moment right now, but I really do hope that if this duping process continues, which is fine, they just choose to be a little bit more creative and artistic with the packaging, the names, the overall story. Nothing is better than a cheaper alternative that performs exactly the same, if not better. So here all day long for a dupe, but dupe in moderation, and if you're if you're gonna dupe, do it creatively. Don't make it a direct knockoff, because that's that's pretty lame. Anyway, I'm gonna go fucking make some Campbell's chicken noodle soup. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up down below and leave me a comment letting me know, are there any dupes that I missed? Are there any results that you guys think I got wrong? What is your favorite e.l.f. product? What's your favorite dupe? What's your favorite brand of chicken noodle soup that I should go buy for this sickness? Let's have a fun little discussion in the comments down below. I'm leaving, bye, love you. Who cares about socials? Ooh. Call me back